Thank you, Julie. This is so great to be back. This is my fifth class in the series. And uh, a few disclaimers. First of all, I don't needlepoint myself. I used to, um, but I just have been out of practice because um, I've been doing other kinds of Judaic art. But I design for needlepoint, which is what got me excited about doing this class. So um, when it comes to the actual stitches, I'm not the expert, but you're in luck today because I have an interview later on with a master teacher of needlepoint. Uh, so I think you're gonna find that really interesting. We are going to cover um, a lot of topics really quickly, but at the end of the class, I'd like to share the artwork, the needlepoint that you're working on. Uh, so if you have some needlepoint, go, go get it, go get it ready, and we will call on people toward the end of the class to share what they're working on. So without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen. Also, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and Julie will relay them to me. And uh, glad to see everyone here, it's just, it's wonderful. So hold on just a sec. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. The Art of Jewish Needlepoint. This is what we're going to cover in the class today. We are gonna talk about what makes needlepoint Jewish, and that's going to be a very short conversation. Um, and then we're going to move on to community needlepoint projects that I've done with other people uh, that I think might, you might find inspirational to try in your own community. Then we're going to meet my friend Doreen Finkel, the owner of needlepoint, artneedlepoint.com, with whom I've worked for many years. And finally, a senior master teacher of Needlepoint who will inspire you to improve your own stitching and um, to think outside the box in terms of the art of Needlepoint. So we are going to concentrate today on Needlepoint. In the United States, Needlepoint specifically means this kind of stitching on canvas, on open canvas. I am going to talk a little bit about embroidery, but really not concentrating on embroidery today. Embroidery is a whole nother art form, but you will see that some of the stitching from embroidery is translated into open canvas work. And that's so beautiful. And that's what makes Needlepoint so exciting to work in. Um, in other parts of the world, Needlepoint is often called tapestry. If you go to museums in Europe, you will see beautiful, elaborate tapestries that are made in needlepoint. And sometimes it's called canvas work. But we are going to concentrate on, on what we call in the United States, needlepoint stitched on open canvas. The first examples of this kind of work were actually from Egypt in 1500 BC. And they used these kinds of stitches to uh, to sew their tents together. Um, but it wasn't until uh, about the 1600s in Europe that what we know as needlepoint today was popularized. Now, Bargello is a kind of needlepoint, and it comes from the needlepoint that was used on chairs at the Bargello Palace in Florence, Italy. These are examples from those chairs that still are there if you go to Florence to the Bargello Palace, which is a museum. The kind of needlepoint that was done in the 1600s is the kind we do today. And Martha Washington was one of uh, 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 the most prolific needlepointers that we knew of. And she made these 13 chairs um, in the early 1800s. And again, they still exist. I believe they're at the Smithsonian. In the 1970s, I'm sure a lot of you like me remember this, when the football player Rosie Greer popularized needlepoint, not just for women, but for men too. And I remember my mom getting super excited about needlepoint, and it was in part because Rosie Greer made it so popular. He wrote a book on needlepoint for men. In 1974, my mom was so excited about doing needlepoint that she asked me, who I love to paint, uh, to paint a canvas and to make this Torah cover. So I painted the canvas, that's me, um, and my mom did the needlepointing, and then we donated it to the synagogue in Jerusalem where I had my bat mitzvah, Harel Synagogue. And, and hello to everybody in Jerusalem. I hope to be there very soon. 
Um, so this was my first uh, experience designing for needlepoint. And then it got me excited to do needlepoint myself and to paint more canvases for my mom. Now, let's talk about what, what does Jewish needlepoint mean? Um, I've spoken with several experts on needlework, and there is not a long history of specifically Jewish needlepoint. There is a lot of work that is embroidery, cross stitch, other kinds of needlework that is used in Hidor Mitzvah, the commandment to beautify our sanctuaries. Um, so, or the home. So these examples that are at the Smithsonian are, are um, examples of early 1800s or mid 1800s uh, cross stitch um, done by Jewish people. We don't know if it's a man or woman, uh, Lazarus or Hollander. Um, and they have Hebrew on them and they have the English alphabet as well. These are very typical for American samplers, but they're, they have a Jewish, uh, the, a Jewish home. Um, so I, I can't really say that there's such a thing as Jewish needlepoint, but it's what you do with the needlepoint after or the intention of the needlepoint that makes it um, something you do for your Jewish family or your Jewish community. Uh, I just wanted to touch on um, a special project I worked on uh, peripherally a few years ago because it's it's an example of, of Jewish embroidery. Um, I was commissioned by Temple Sinai in Stamford, Connecticut to make Torah covers for their sanctuary. The, this is their ark. These are ark doors that were stitched by the congregants of Temple Sinai in 1970. It was a community project. It looks as good today as it did, I'm sure, uh, what almost 50 years ago um, and the stitching is magnificent. I loved this project because it was both a community project and it was exquisite work. So these are the arc doors I was shown and when the arc doors open these are the Torah covers that I made to go with it and it, it was unlike most of my projects because I needed to include embroidery in the project to make it coordinate with the arc doors at Temple Sinai. So these Torah covers were made in many different techniques, but I had to look at the embroidery, which is beautiful, on these arc doors and try to emulate it on the Torah covers. So this is a detail from the embroidery at Temple Sinai and more details. Um, it's it's it was done by many different people and they learned different techniques and it's held up just beautifully so these are the torah covers you can see i didn't do a lot of embroidery but uh, enough so that it looks like it coordinates with the arc doors that were made 40 years earlier now i just want to talk about two important embroidery projects before we move only on to needlepoint Rachel Braun is an amazing artist who puts a lot of thought into her embroidery. This is an example of a 12 inch by 32 inch black embroidery piece she did called 48 Ways. I have a link in the chat. On the link, you will have a link to all these things I'm mentioning now. So please, I encourage you to read about Rachel and her work and to see the detail of her embroidery and how it enhances um, the art of Torah and appreciating the Torah. Another project with, which I need to mention was started by Tema Gentiles. She's um, one of the, the main Judaic artists of the last um, half century and somebody whom I admire very much. She lives in Canada. Uh, Tema started a project in 2013 called Torah Stitch by Stitch, in which she invited artists from all over the world to do embroidery, um, cross stitch, and to interpret their particular Torah portions or the pasuk um, that they were focusing on. 1,450 stitchers participated in 28 countries, and it was on exhibit in 2019. It is a magnificent project. Again, the link is in the chat. I encourage you to go to the website called Torah Stitch by Stitch and to see this amazing work of art and contribution to, to Jewish life. And all the people who participated, they did excellent work 
their work was vetted. So it wasn't just um, random. They had to do a really good job and they did. It was beautiful. It is beautiful. So I, I uh, contacted Jody Eichler Levine, who is a professor of Judaic studies, and uh, she just published this book in 2020 on Jewish needlework today. And I asked her about needlepoint specifically, and she also said there is no specific history of Jewish needlepoint. But I encourage you to get her book and to read it, especially if you do community pomegranate guild kind of stitching, if you love embroidery, if you want to learn more about uh, Jews and crafts and uh, needlework. Um, and there's a link in the chat, again, to everything that I talk about today. So as many as you know who do needlepoint, canvases come in different sizes, 10 being the largest opening and 24 being the smallest. And there are different kinds of canvas. It depends whether you want to do hand painting to design the canvas or you want to have it printed. And again, what kind of stitching will be done. So some of the projects that I've worked on that um, involve other stitchers, um, I'm just going to run through some of these projects now. This was a chuppah, and the front panel is about um, 15 inches high and six feet wide. And I painted it so that members of Bethel Temple in West Hartford uh, could stitch it. And it came out just beautifully. And then that became part of the chuppah, the rest of which is a silk painted quilted chuppah and is used by anyone who gets married in the sanctuary at Bethel Temple. When I do needlepoint, um, I, uh, designing, I used to do only painted canvases, hand painting, acrylic paint on the canvas. It's very, um, it's a beautiful art, but it takes a lot of time. So I met Doreen, who you'll, you'll meet by audio in a few minutes, um, and she had developed a gicle printing, which is a really sophisticated way to print onto needlepoint canvas. So now I design, and then Doreen prints onto the canvas and then people purchase the canvas to needlepoint. So these are two canvases that you can needlepoint at home that are panels for a chuppah. The first person who did this um, was Jill Siegel. This is Jill in the coat there um, and we're admiring her work which was unbelievable. Her stitching, um, Jill was trained in finance but um, she uh, sadly um, had cancer for many years and um, as a way to pass the time during chemo and while she was raising children and her downtime she would do gorgeous needlework and this was the last project she did in her life um, she wanted a project that would be something her family could use for the rest of their lives it could be a family heirloom be passed down generation to generation so jill made panels for a chuppah, which the first wedding happened two years ago when her niece got married. This is how her stitching looked. And this is the finished front panel. It says, Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Jill used silk uh, thread and metallic for the words. And she used many, many different kinds of stitches. Here is a detail of Jill's work. It's magnificent. And um, as I said, this chuppah was used um, at her niece's wedding and God willing will be used at her own children's and her nieces and nephews and future generations. I mean, um, Jill, who I knew in college, uh, really uh, dove into needlepoint and became passionate about it. And as you can see, was fantastic at it. This is the chuppah finished. So the front panel was a part of the front and then the rest of the chuppah was a, a piece that I made using my paper cutting technique that I've shown before. Here's the underside of it. and um, It'll be used for all their family weddings. 
So Jill also stitched this canvas, which is, um, you'll see at Art Needlepoint, and this is the, the seven species. In Judaism, we have seven species we, uh, that, that are mentioned in the Torah and uh, have important significance throughout the year. Uh, so we have pomegranates and figs and olives, and they're represented here. And this is how Jill interpreted it in her needlepoint. And one thing you're gonna hear from the master teacher later is that this is a suggestion. The canvas on the left is a suggestion. You choose the colors, you choose the stitches, you interpret it and there is no right, no wrong. Um, this is a detail of what Jill did on those seven species. So one project I really enjoyed is this is um, the interior of B'nai Jacob Synagogue in Woodbridge, Connecticut, and you can see the beautiful stained glass. Uh, and there, you, you see the hint of a menorah behind this very tall arc. So uh, when our rabbi, uh, Rabbi Rana Shapira moved to town, her husband wanted to make her a gift. He asked me to make a needlepoint canvas based on the stained glass in the B'nai Jacob Sanctuary. So Rabbi Shapiro would have the talit bag whenever she goes to synagogue. So this is David Franklin, her husband on the left with the canvas that was printed at artneedlepoint.com. And then he finished it. It took him a few years. And that's his wife, Rabbi Shapiro, holding her finished talit bag. So you can see you can personalize uh, the canvases and then interpret them with your own color choices and yarn choices. Here's a detail of David's work. I love working with committees who are doing a community project um, like a Torah cover. So this was uh, Temple Bethel in Boca Raton uh, two years ago, um, commissioned a needlepoint project that they could make for their chapel Torah cover. Um, this is a panel that I later sewed on to the Torah cover. So they worked on the panel, they passed it around, and it also represents the seven species. Here's a detail of it. And they um, had in addition to this, a hala cover that they all wor worked on. They passed it around to different participants and everybody had a chance to do some stitching on both the Torah cover and the hala cover. The, when you do a community project, the most important ingredient is the organizer because uh, they are great projects, but they're very ambitious. So when they're done as a group, you need somebody who's willing to put in the time to organize the project. This was a great example, Cape Cod Synagogue, uh, a few years ago commissioned this Jerusalem uh, panorama and their work is beautiful. Here's a detail of it. One caveat for a needlepoint Torah cover is that it can get a little bit heavy. So I, I do think a panel on the front is better if you're going to do a Torah cover, but um, it does work if you want to cover the whole Torah cover. These are canvases that I painted by hand for B'nai Israel Congregation in Rockville. Uh, so this is what the canvases looked like. And then a couple of years later, these are the Torah covers that B'nai Israel Congregation stitched. And these are panels and they are on a crushed velvet um, that wraps around the whole Torah. Now, I knew I was doing this class a few weeks ago and I put out a call on Facebook and, and asked people to send me pictures of their needle points because I think it's great to see what other people are doing. So I'm just going to run through some of my friends' work. Um, Abby did this gorgeous creation. Um, I, I didn't design it, but I love it. And I love her choice of colors. And Barbara Silverstone did these talit bags um, which I especially love the one on the left with uh, the dove and the sunrise sunset and her use of shading is exquisite. Ellen sent these. These are um, very, very colorful. And uh, I love that she mixed up the stitching in all of the designs. And you can see her trying out different stitches. And I, I think that's what makes Needlepoint really fun. 
Elise sent these. These are talit bags and atarot. Atara, which technically means crown, but it means the collar of the talit. So you, you don't want to needlepoint an entire talit. That would be very heavy. But you can needlepoint an atara. And, and they are about three inches wide by about 21 inches uh, long. And so you have a nice space uh, to needlepoint there. And you can see at least did a beautiful job on these atarot, which will now be folded and sewn onto the talit, like you see on the left. And Rachel uh, does a lot of needlepoint and she is a real master at it. I especially love this piece on the left, which I think is a takeoff on an agam. Agam is an Israeli artist with these beautiful colors. And she did a great job choosing the colors and the placement. And I love the metallic as well. And my friend Sherry loves to do clutches and um, hanging pieces for the home. And she does also a beautiful job. I'm really appreciative of people who sent me their work. Um, my friend Sandy Starkman sent this. This was the work of Aviva Silverman, who, who sadly died. Um, she was the Pomegranate uh, Guild president in Chicago in the 1990s, and many people around Chicago uh, said that they have her work. And these are mezuzah cases. Mezuzah cases are fun, obviously, because they're small and you can get them done fairly quickly. So I love this idea and I'm really grateful for Sandy uh, sending these pictures in. Now, Roxanne is the mother of Marsha Goldstein. And I have to say, uh, I didn't know Ro Roxanne. Um, she passed away, but her work is amazing. And I was so taken with it that I'm gonna just show you a few pictures. This is a talit bag that I designed and um, that Roxanne uh, must have purchased from Art Needlepoint and stitched. And you can see all the detail in her stitching was incredible. I understand she was also a great knitter and um, I like her work so much. I put a little bio of her by her daughter in the chat link. So go to the page in the link and you will read about Roxanne. Um, I mean, just incredible incredible stitching. And uh, she's, she's getting me excited to, to go back to needle pointing. <laughs> um, this is a clock uh, Roxanne made. And you can see she had a lot of fun choosing the stitches. And the detail in this piece is just amazing. You can see some Bargello type of stitching. She tried all different kinds of techniques here. And I love three-dimensional things like hair and fur. And um, her, look at the flowers, look at the roses, the detail. It's just wonderful and inspirational. And I'm so glad that Marcia shared this with me. These are uh, three photographs of the same design. So I designed uh, Seasons for Doreen years ago. And these are three, um, clients who sent in their pictures. So Doreen is going to talk about this in a minute. I interviewed Doreen um, uh, by audio, and I'd like to share that interview with you now. Thank you, Jeanette, for inviting us and your talent and allowing our stitchers, who like to call, we like to call needlepointistas, to stitch your beautiful art which has, in our humble opinion, raised the bar for a Judaic needlepoint, whether for ritual items or other purpose. Um, the Art Needlepoint Company was founded over 14 years ago with one thought in mind, uh, to provide a, a wide selection of art to stitch at a reasonable cost. Uh, most of the canvases that are sold prior to our existence are hand-painted overseas, and they're designed by needlepoint designers and then sold to stores. The price points were, are and were sometimes very prohibitive for people to enter a very enjoyable experience. They're expensive and there was for us not a lot of choices. So what we did was we interrupted the painted canvases and created Gicle. And as a founder of the company, it was very important that we had quality of design and of the materials to stitch with, as well as personal attention to each stitcher. Um, I think Amazon helped us a lot because it 
gave people this secure feeling years ago to buy online. That was kind of a new phenomenon, and no one pretty much was selling needlepoint online. What are the kind of items that you see people asking for? Like, is it mostly talit bags? Um, I know you also have uh, yarmulkes, kipot. Is that what you see mostly for a, the Judaic market? We have lots of customers who make more than one talis bag for lots of different people in their family. Um, every time there's a new grandchild born, there's a person who's thinking about stitching something for them so they can get it done before the child's bat mitzvah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so there's a, some that are very organized about that. And I would say that's still the stronghold that more people want to have a talus bag. Recently, there's been a fair number of inquiry about holla covers. Mm. I'd love to look at one of the more popular canvases on the website, which happens to be one of yours called Seasons. Mm. It's such a beautiful canvas and it has a lot going on, but it has very distinct shapes. And we liked it enough to incorporate it on our homepage. It appeals to a lot of people for, I think, for its serenity and its use of color, but also it's one that just about any skill level can stitch. So there's one that was completed by a woman named Susan mm -hmm. who has never stitched before. And when she called about it, I happened to be the person, I had to look this up, but I happened to be the person that spoke with her and said, are you sure? Mm. And she said, sure, I really love this. And that actually is what is really important. If somebody really loves something, they will finish it. Mm -hmm. Another is by a woman who is proficient with basic stitches and there are only two in needlepoint. Mm -hmm. And everything thereafter is borrowed from embroidery. So there might be 200 choices, but the basic needlepoint stitches are continental and basket weave, and seasons can be done successfully with either of those. And the last one of the three that we presented um, is switched by, sorry, is stitched by a woman in Canada who's a master teacher, mm -hmm. which she had stitched for herself. But then people saw it both on her website, in social media, in her home, and they wanted to do the gamut. So she taught a class years ago, and her name is Rosalind. So there are, there are elements to stitching, something like seasons or other things that are not always readily apparent, like the colors and the shapes and how best to use them. And as you see with these, sometimes the stitches do the work, as you saw on Rosalind's piece, where they do different types of stitches to cover an area. There's also a beautiful flower um, a rose by a woman named uh, Waldman. She lives in England. And she did both using thread and different threads, some as wool and some as silk, as well as different stitches, very proficiently done. Mm. And sometimes the threads themselves without any fences stitches do the work. So you can take we like to use a lot of the silk thread because they reflect light and they're very easy to use. And the three that you have for seasons, all of those were done in silk. Mm. And they're very easy to use and very durable. We do a lot of things with all of the talus bags, all the holo covers, anything that people touch, we use silk. And you can use the silk as it is, or you can separate plies to shade, such as with... Um, I believe you have a Talit bag that was done by Marcy, mm -hmm. your creation to redemption. That's a really good example of using the thread to cover an area and not be befuddled. Whereas the other talus bag um, that you have with the big brown background, mm -hmm. that's just straight stitching. So if you compare the two images side by side, you'll see that sometimes in Marcy's, she has split colors to try to replicate what you did. Mm -hmm. I believe that was a watercolor that you gave to us. It started as a, yeah, as a fiber art piece. And, um, and then it's, yeah, people translate into needlepoint. I love what Marcy did. It's gorgeous. And the hollow cover, mm -hmm. that's just straight stitching. And it's still very effective. And it is the very first canvas that Peggy ever did. Yeah. So just because you've never picked up a needle, doesn't mean you can't.
Mm-hmm. If you want to, you can. Mm-hmm. You can do something simple like Dave's Marigold Make a Pillow. Mm-hmm. You can do something small like a clutch, or they can do their chair seats, or they can do their chair backs, or both. Mm. Mary is from the United States, and she also did all of her dining room chairs, the backs. Our basic tenant is that the truth is that not only are we individuals enough, but what we create with needle and thread will always be enough. Mm. And we hope that every person who chooses something from us will not only enjoy doing it, but be proud of it when it's completed, no matter how small, no matter how complicated. Thank you, Jeanette, for... So uh, as, a, as a gift to everybody in the class, um, Doreen is offering a discount if you go, if you put in the code SUNNY. Um, again, this is all in the link uh, information that I put in the chat, um, but I wanna say thank you to Doreen Finkel for um, that wonderful interview. And I want to move on to the last interview, uh, which is a master teacher who I think you'll really enjoy meeting. And then we will share uh, more of our art together. Hi, I am Susan Hookstra, and I am actually a senior master teacher of needlework. There is a master level, and then there's another year of intense study and research and a paper that helps you to become a senior master teacher. To become a senior master teacher through the organization where I am accredited, it is a seven year process. Um, So you start at a journeyman level, and then if you go all the way through, you end up being a senior master teacher. It it, uh, forces you to study color and design, um, how to teach adults, how to teach children, and also forces you to come up with your own designs. We are not, when you're becoming certified in any of the organizations, you are forced to create designs of your own and you can only teach original designs. How do people learn from you? I do go to seminars, which is usually a group of people. You know, you can have, at a, at a normal seminar, they limit it at 24 people. Um, I do in-person classes. I do private lessons out of my, actually my home in Maine. I do that. Um, I've done some Zoom lessons, private lessons, um, now that COVID has you know, hit us. And, but we do it all. We teach individuals, groups, guilds, shop people, um, just about anybody who's interested in your design. Do you, would you ever do, uh, like if a, if a group requested, um, like a sisterhood uh, organization wanted to do like a group of 20 people, could you do that by Zoom? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And what uh, what is your favorite yarn to work with? Are you a do you prefer silk? Do you like wool? What what do you like? Uh, that's a really good question. There's so many great threads out there for needlepoint now. Um, I think my favorite thread that I use is pepper pot silk. I like the way it feels, and and this is really important in the needlepoint world. The price point. Mm-hmm. It is not exorbitantly expensive, you know, like a lot of other silks. Um, that's my favorite, pepper pot. And it comes in a gob of colors. Right. Okay, wonderful. And where, um, I, I don't know where people buy needlepoint yarn. Where do you go? Where do you suggest people look for yarn? Local stores or? You would look for a specialty needlepoint shop. And if you're a needlepointer, you'll know where they are. <laughs> okay. there, there are not a lot of them around and you can't get that kind of thread at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or any any right. of those kind of places um, but if you're a needle pointer you'll know and what size canvas do you prefer to work on I usually use 18 count though a design I'm teaching this year uh, in the summertime part of it is on 24 it's on two different sized cam- canvas and one's attached to the other mm-hmm. so but 24 limits the people who will take your class. Because it's so tiny. It's so small, yeah. Right, right. The thing that I am really known for is color, is color theory, I guess, um, and teaching color through my design, okay? So what you're looking at is a study in color and how different kinds of threads affect a canvas. Because just because it's painted orange doesn't mean that you need to paint it, I mean, to stitch it with orange threads. So this is my blank canvas, obviously. And then this 
you get it see yep that's the same way this is the same canvas stitched so the orange doesn't look orange anymore right oh very cool um, the green looks more olivey uh, the yellow still looks pretty yellowy um, but the blue becomes more of, of a brighter blue than it is on the canvas so what i like to talk about a lot and i am i'm actually teaching this class in the very very near future is how different threads interact on top of color there these are very simple stitches um, they're just on a diagonal of six and but they're put down in layers the green one is the first layer the yellow is a second layer and then the metallic is the third layer mm. and it's just all about how color um, how it relates and how it plays to other colors. It is separated, the four quadrants are separated by a charcoal gray color, so as a very neutral color so that it doesn't affect colors on either side or on any of the quadrants. So you've left some of the canvas without any stitching? Yes, it is an open canvas in the back on a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, even the background, which is an alternate diagonal tent variation, it is every other opening so every thread is not covered even in the background and for the design it is so that you can understand how these colors play off of each other so um, the first time i taught this i wanted to make sure that everybody took and moved the colors around so this is how i did it and i feel almost that it's a little bit too matchy matchy for me mm. So I encouraged people to put the blue, the blue gray on top of the orange, and then the green on top of the blue, just so that people could understand how the colors related to each other. Wow, that's beautiful. And what, what would be the title of a class where you do this kind of work? This particular one is called A Thread for All, All Seasons, A Color Interactive Study. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you do any color blending in your work where you like do like a gradient from one to the next or would you purchase a separate color like how does how do you do that in needlepoint okay i'm gonna whoops, switch this back again um for needlepoint there are certain designs that are out that i have that i've taken different colors of threads and put them in there together i just finished a piece for art needlepoint where i shaded and started with a whole lot of one value and one thread of another value so that I had six in the needle. And eventually I had only one of the original, five of the other, so that it would show the shading. So mm -hmm. I swap out, but that has to be a pliable thread and not all threads are pliable. Do you teach any classes on shading or is that yes, something? I do. Yeah, I okay. do have classes on shading. Um, I have a, my fox, I have a fox design called Waiting for the Chickens that uses that same theory that I use for the art needlepoint canvas. Hmm. Do you have any classes to offer uh, for people who really aren't, aren't yet at the stage where they want to do this advanced kind of thing? I do. I have a, a color study called Bargello Schools of Color, and it basically teaches you how to read diagrams really and that's a huge thing for needlepoint there's no plying of threads it's all a single ply you use it as is as it comes right off of the skein it's really interesting because i find that a lot of people forget what they did not know mm -hmm. so when we were all beginners and we've all been there you know everybody had to start someplace so you have to try to remember what you didn't know in the beginning yes exactly um is there anything else you'd like to share with people or have we covered the most important things i think we've covered a lot of really great topics um but i guess my one thing that i would say is don't be afraid to change if you're at a canvas even if you're in a class make it your own you know what they're telling you is a guideline it's not the gospel yes. do what you want to do make it your own you don't like the blue ditch the blue go with the green who cares right exactly. make it make it for yourself and enjoy exactly. the process it's all about the process i want to thank susan hookstra immensely for her time and her expertise the links to everything again this will be in the chat but it's on my website at needlepoint class is the last part the suffix and all that we've talked about there are links to everything today so now i'm going to stop sharing 
uh, my screen and I'm going to ask um, Julie to help me identify anybody who would like to share their work. And uh, we would love to have a, a little show and tell. And if you have any questions, uh, please put it into uh, the chat. Um, so, so if Sorry, so Jeanette, there are there were a few questions that came in. Should we do the questions first and then people um, who didn't yes. hear at the beginning, if you wanna go grab your needle point work, um, there will be the opportunity to share. Um, how do you clean an old needle point? Mm. Um, I have two suggestions. If it's something that you are brave enough to work on yourself, and this is my experience with silk and other fabrics that I work with, I have found that OxyClean is a miracle work, worker. Um, so the first thing I would try is to uh, dab a little OxyClean on a clean white cloth and try uh, cleaning a, a small area to make sure it's going to be okay. Other than that, I think you need to go to a specialty uh, person and I would ask at your needlepoint store in your area who they would suggest using. Okay, is, oh, I can't read my writing now. Uh, I think it's Kremel or Krevel. Is that needlepoint or embroidery? Cre cruel, Maybe. cruel. <laughs> Um, I believe cruel is, it would be considered a kind of embroidery and at least in the United States. Oh, yeah. so the um, but uh, as I've learned, um, all the stitching that is done in embroidery can be reinterpreted into needlepoint. So there isn't just one kind of definition of, of what needlepoint is or embroidery. So it's all about experimenting and using many different stitches. There are books on hundreds of stitches to do on a needlepoint canvas. Okay, so um, one person asked, how do you put together a mezuzah case and where do you find a mezuzah case to needlepoint? Okay, so um, a mezuzah case is just a small container and I don't know how Aviva made them, but um, if people are interested, I can design a few for Art Needlepoint and then we can uh, make some suggestions about how to put them together. Basically, a needle, uh, a mezuzah is just a case that would enclose a rolled up um, mezuzah, which is the calligraphy on a little piece of parchment written by a sofer like or sofer like Julie. Um, but it could be any you're basically making a little tiny pillowcase and on the back you can put velcro to stick to the wall um, by the way any lightweight mezuzah can be put on the wall or the the doorpost of the house with velcro um, so it would be my like making a small pillowcase that you can slip something into at the top that's how i would do it someone asked how to do the single lines Single lines. Okay, I'm going to have to refer you to needlepoint experts at your local shop or um, online. There are lots of YouTube videos. Um, I've, I'm a knitter. I knit like crazy and everything I need to know I find on YouTube these days. Um, somebody just mentioned Pomegranate Guild and I want to uh, say a big shout out to the Pomegranate Guilds. And if you live in an area where there is a Pomegranate Guild, find out more about them because they have experts in every kind of needlework and they will be able to help you with a lot of these details like mezuzah case um, and that kind of information. Okay, so um, let's do some sharing. If folks could, uh, if you can find it, um, raise your virtual hand so that I know that you would like to share. Um, Jeanette, is it best if we do this in a group? I could like hot, I could spotlight, um, Kind of yeah. Yes, you you do this. Ones. You do the spotlighting. Yes. Okay, great. So, folks who have their raised hand, I'm going to spotlight you. Um, and just hang on for one moment. I'm going to get the whole group spotlighted. We might do a second a second round if there's a lot of people. It's hard to see folks all at once. Okay, well, let's, start with these, let's start with these six and then we'll do a second round. While um, Julie is spotlighting somebody, I just want to say the Pomegranate Guild is pomegranateguild.org. Uh, thank you, Barbara, for putting that in the chat. 
And even if you don't live near uh, one or you're not even a stitcher, you can inquire about anything through the Pomegranate Guild. Okay. So Inez. Inez, hold up your needlework. Yes. Let's see what you're working. Oh, beautiful. This is, oh. a hand, this is the handmade talus that we made for my granddaughter for her bat mitzvah. Isn't that gorgeous with the Shema on it in all different rainbow colors? That's stunning. Cheryl. Really stunning. Thank um, you, Inez. So my, I actually don't have my needlepoint with me right now because it, it's at my brother's. That I had some things I had made for my mother. Um, but I know that we've got a um, Jewish mosaic coming up next time. And I'm not going to have this with me then. Um, my son just got married. And this is the glass that they crushed at their wedding. Cool. Including cool. Uh, the two big hearts are for Ben and Avra. And she's pregnant with twins. And I've made the hearts into a little butterfly. In the middle wow. of representing the family. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Pa Paula, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. This is a canvas that I'm almost finished. It's uh, to brighten up the cold Edmonton winters. <laughs> and um, this is one I'm working on. My, my girlfriend's son and uh, is getting married New Year's Eve, so I, I have a bit of a crush time. This will be a challah cover. Gorgeous, Shabbat Shalom, that's stunning. That's beautiful, beautiful. Leslie? It isn't Judaica, <laughs> however, it is one that I've really enjoyed working on. Look at that background you're doing, that's fabulous, and I love the gingham shirt, that's great. Wow, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you. Evelyn? So I've made a lot of uh, Talit bags, about 12 of them, but this is for my newest great granddaughter. It's all done. I don't know if you can see it. Beautiful. Wow. Look at all those techniques you've done. That's yeah, fantastic. I have a great teacher. I live in California and her name is Charlene from Needle Hearts in Tarzana. If you ever come to California, you have to come to the shop. And Excellent. here at the bottom, I put Safta, which is what I'm called. Yay, Safta. Kalakavod. That's fantastic. Thank you. DD, you have to unmute your computer. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm a quilter, <laughs> but I have tried, I'm in pomegranate, so I've tried various things. This is a, um, just a counted cross, uh, just, anyway, a counted cross uh, shop, of stitchery shop. Wow. And oh my goodness. Then we had a seminar and this was, black work that I did, sorry, there's a glare, I just added to the design. I had gone to uh, a museum in Santa Fe and there was a lot of old black work, black work stitches that were there um, and also needlepoint stitches. And I took photographs of all of them. And um, I've been put, sending them around to people because they're stitches people had never seen. Wow, and, that's so cool. And then my one and only needlepoint. <laughs> <laughs> pomegranates, um, beautiful. It's, it's pomegranates and it's this stitching that they did where you leave the open background. Yes, I don't yes. Know if it can be seen as easily. I guess you can see through it. Yeah, it's like lace. It's gorgeous. Wow, right, but, thank you. So it was the only one and only time I had tried um, needlepoint. But for the most part, I'm a quilter. I do that and, you know, most of the time. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Julie, is there another group? There is another group. So um, I'm just going to bring you all in. Okay. Marcia, I'll bring you in. And Susie and Lenore. And another Susie <laughs> and Roberta 
and someone whose name is owner. I don't know what your name is. And um, we will do Charlotte and Kayla. Okay. Okay, great. So Marcy, why don't you show us, uh, and you have to unmute. There you go. Okay. Uh, I'm purely a dabbler, uh, but this was one I was particularly proud of because uh, I copied my nephew's bar mitzvah invitation and just obviously blocked out the words of the invitation and put his name in it. So I painted the canvas myself and then my daughter and I did the, uh, made it into a talus bag for him. Beautiful, Yermiahu David, excellent, that's gorgeous. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Um, Susie Magnus. Oh, I recognize that. Yeah, this was my, my very first project about 45 years ago when I had to buy a book for left-handed needle pointers because no one could show me how to do it <laughs> on YouTube. So at this point, I only did the continental stitch, but I thought it was pretty good for my first shot out. I remember my mom did all the Chagall windows, uh, and I remember the store in Jerusalem that was selling the needlepoint canvases at the time. So that's, that brings back great memories, and that's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. Susie Shear. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm happy to see my dear friend, Marcy. We spend our summers together at Camp Ramah in the Poconos. <laughs> um, she's in, in the, uh, in the uh, infirmary and I am in Amanut in art. Oh, yay, this is, Ramah. This is a pillow that I made. I got the scrim at a place called Scrim Discovery in Ocean City, New Jersey when we were vacationing there. And um, I, I was, I was especially interested in your um, explanation on shading, which I really could have used in here because it's not such a great job, mm -hmm. but it was my first time out in doing this and I did embellish it with some beads um, just to give it a little bit of sparkle. This sits in a sunroom and especially in the late afternoon, it does pick up a lot of the sunlight and That's it sparkles a little bit. Thank you. I love it. That is beautiful. Have a great time at camp this summer. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Roberta, can you show us what you have? Okay. okay. Uh, this is going to be for a talus bag. And not talus bag, fill-in bag. Stunning. Stunning. I, it, that is something I would love to do because you're never going to be bored. You're trying all these different stitches, right? Right, right. And it's from a book. It's from, um, just one second. That's really cool. It's from this. Deb B's Designs. That is very inspirational. Thank you. And, and I'm not making it, I'm not doing the center. I'm going to put a name in the center. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. That's really great. Um, Charlotte. Um, I recently completed, um, I was one of five stitchers to do a new Ben Gavra for our synagogue, the cover when the Torah is on the table but not being read. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it to show. Uh, but I want to show is my late mother's work. She also did a Chagall window, uh, but I don't have it at the moment accessible. But this is a, um, like a sampler. Mm. that she had done. So I don't know if you could see the variety of stitches. Stunning, stunning. Um, but her, her pièce de résistance <laughs> that I have hanging downstairs is this um, rural scene. I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and she always said this reminded her of the view of uh, some of the hills. So Absolutely. The clouds are all French knots. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you could see the variety of stitches. Um, and oh, she wow. just had it framed for me in this beautiful, uh, beautifully framed. Yeah, so, that's fantastic. Those are gorgeous. She, she was very, is very talented. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy doing needlepoint, which of course I learned from her. I'm a quilter too. 
and I'm in uh, pomegranate guilt, but thank you for letting me uh, share. Thank you, and I'm glad you mentioned a Ben Gavra. That's that's what we call the cover that goes between the readings, uh, the, Torah, the Torah reading cover. Um, an excellent idea for something else that can be needle pointed in the synagogue. Thank you. Uh, also, the binders for the Torahs, um, those are called wimples. Um, those are great for needle point because they actually should be stiff and uh, heavier like that. So, so when you're thinking of projects to do for your community, those are great. Lenore. What do you have to share? There we go. Um, well, I've been needlepointing for a ridiculous number of years, um, and I only could grab a couple of things. Uh, one of them, one of the things I was very proud of that I don't have a picture of is uh, we did the uh, the edging for the uh, for the bima for the Torah table. Yeah, uh, reading table at the synagogue, and I helped design it with a needlepoint designer, and co I was the coordinator. Got mm -hmm. uh, everybody to stitch, including the canner, the rabbi, a bunch of people just wanted to put in a couple of stitches to say they helped. And that was those community projects are just incomparable. But this was uh, this is my talus bag. Oh, isn't that beautiful, Leia? Beautiful. Leia. Yeah. Oh, that's um, great. And one of my sons left his home, so here it is. Oh, very, very nice. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I've made them for all the relatives uh, for their B'nai Mitzvah and uh, hala covers for wedding presents. And I put in the chat, I started one of your hala covers, and then there was a runaway groom. And so it's still sitting in the basement because it's so beautiful. <laughs> Uh, well, thank <laughs> you so much. Eventually, the bad, the bad vibe will wear off, and I, and I, maybe I'll just make it for myself. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Lenore, and we're going to for inviting me. Thank you. We're going to move on, Miriam. You're on mute. Just unmute yourself. Uh, I think you're a little frozen. So I think we're going to. We have to. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, excellent. That's stunning. I love Jerusalem and I love those colors. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Okay, um, Julie, do we have um, another group? Because I see some more hands are raised. We, do. we have 11 more people. Um, should we just put them in one group and we can go a little over time? Is that yes. okay? Sure. Okay, great. So I'm just going to spotlight all the people who have their hands raised. I'm so glad people are willing to share, and it's such beautiful work. I'll just, uh, I'll share as I'm doing this. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that I was, that I was a needlepoint fail. And <laughs> I have to admit now that it was for the project of Stitch by Stitch, which is especially embarrassing. <laughs> I thought, how hard could it be to needlepoint a little bit of Torah? Uh-huh. From a t somebody who writes the Torah, yeah. she should know, right? So but I had to, I had to send it back. I, uh, yeah. Um, um, so actually, I can't spotlight more than nine people, so we'll have okay, to. Okay, so back. let's go a little quickly, and I'm going to call on Tema. Tema, just unmute yourself, and we have the 12 tribes from Tema. Gorgeous. Yeah. I want to tell you that my friend did it, and she's sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and she very nicely gave it to me for a gift. So if I back yeah. up, I think you can all see it. That is beautiful and very detailed. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy Regev from Israel, I think, right? Yep, from Israel, that's right. Um, I don't really like needlepoint, I'm sorry to say. I'm very impressed by everybody's work. I usually yeah. embroider. I've embroidered talit covers for all my grandsons, and um, I just have an example of cruel work here. Which oh, is thank like, you. I think it's in the middle between embroidery and needlepoint. Perfect. Thank That's you. gorgeous. Thank yeah. you. Oh, I love those flowers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Jill Layton. Jill, you there? I was just trying to unmute. Uh, great. Um, I just wanted to show um, two things. This my mother made um, about a year before she passed away. And the amazing thing about um, this needlepoint is that she had macular degeneration and couldn't see out of one of her eyes and very poor eyesight in the other. So she just loved to needlepoint and I just, I just love it. 
um, wow. and that she was able to do that. And then my grandmother, I have very few things from her, but this was, I guess, called a cross stitch yeah. um, that she did. Um, it must be about 100 years old. So I'm very, I'm very happy to have that. That is stunning. Wow, what great memories they must bring. Um, Thank you. Uh, Richie? Richie Rosenberg? <laughs> I'm one of the younger cross-stitchers here, so I'd love to learn better techniques, and I'm personalizing a wedding gift. Wow, that looks like a lot of work. Um, my question is, I need a good idea how to actually ship it to Israel because the couple was supposed to visit but they can visit so um, I need an I, idea <laughs> Fed FedEx unless you have somebody to carry it don't do oh, it I mean is it worth framing it here or just no it? no no first of frame all it. framing framing in Israel is less expensive than it is here in the United States and why should you pay for the glass and all that to, just to have a break um, uh, I, I've learned from many years of experience to frame it there Thank yeah, you. but I appreciate that it. is stunning, stunning. Um, Barbara Orville. Okay, so I do kits because I am not artistic, but can you see this? Wow, absolutely. That is fantastic. Look at the three-dimensional uh, yarn on there. I love it. So that's one, and this one also three-dimensional is very cool yeah, very I cool um, i'm glad you mentioned kits um doreen has a lot of kits at art needlepoint and if you uh like barbara are a little you know unsure of which design you want or you know, talk to them about putting together a kit um i think that's fabulous i'm glad you mentioned that thank you um kayla are you there kayla uh, Bar uh, let's move to Barbara Krauss because I don't know where Kayla is. Barbara, are you there? Yes. So for um, the fun other aspect of this, um, I made this belt when I was a probably teen or preteen and I haven't done anything since and it doesn't fit me anywhere and I never finished it. I actually <laughs> thought I actually thought I hadn't finished the work. But it turns out, all these years I thought it was undone. It's not undone. I just never turned it into the belt. <laughs> you could. I don't know where the belt is or anything else is. You could add know. a little fabric to it and, and, a, and a belt buckle and, and you could still have a belt. So wow. think about it. Take it to a local needlepoint store. They'll help you. Um, okay. And really quickly, I was going to say, I, I didn't grab it because I didn't think about it, but I have a work that my grandmother did that's over 100 years old also. That I wow, love. wow. Well, take good care of that. Take good care. Is there anybody here in this group that I haven't called on yet? Um, There's Miriam and Ellen. Ellen, okay. Hi, my name, my maiden name is Reuben. So I made a Reuben tribe. Very nice. The tribe of Rouven. Very yes. nice. And I also have one that has a few different stitches. It's all different cactuses. Wow. And That's some of them, it, it was fun because it was different stitches than normal. That's fantastic. That is great. I love that. Um, thank you. Uh, Tema, did I call on you yet? Yes, you did. I showed the, um, the seven. Okay, so I think we're ready for another group. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we will do, this will be our, our final group. And I'm going to add Carol, Terry, Marsha, Kent and Judy, Pat, Joanne, Oh, it looks like Kayla's back. And someone named Phone. I don't know what your name is, but Phone, you are in the group. Okay, uh, Carol Rich, can you show us? So I, uh, over the years, um, I, I don't do anything anymore. I'm not like, uh, who's ever mother or grandmother, I have macular degeneration. And it's just too hard to do any of this. Uh, but, but over the years, I tried 
just about every kind of uh, needlework technique. And I have an old book somewhere by a Selma Springer if people are interested in, um, in different kinds of needle techniques. This is actually black work. And uh, I'll, I'll do my best. It's got the 12, 12 tribes. Um, so yeah, we have uh, Reuben, uh, Shimon, uh, Levi. That's stunning. Oh my goodness. Um, wow. Judah, I mean, <laughs> or Yehuda, Dan. Um, wow. I, I did this, I think, close to 30 years ago. Uh, Naftali. Yeah. Yeah, I see uh, I them. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I'll, let you, I'll let you uh, read them all. That one has some sparkle. Yeah, Yisachar, yes, it's stunning. I, want, I have to move on just for time, but I'm really glad you shared that because it's very, very beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, Terry, you. Terry? Hi, I'm not a um, needle pointer. I'm a embroiderer, I guess. However, I design my own stuff. And I did one a day during the pandemic on these linen napkins. Oh my gosh, what a great use of the pandemic time. <laughs> I know, I call it my pandemic collection. Yeah, I call that cheaper than therapy. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, that's fantastic. Marsha? Okay. Hi, um, I'm working on a, my son decided to, he needed a new talit bag, and this is the peril of doing a solid color background. Uh, yeah. At some point, I'll put the dove in, but on the more humorous side, I hope you can see it, this <laughs> hangs in our bathroom. Oh, and, that's so cute. Right. I did this on a trip cross country, and it was really a wonderful way to get away from the driving. Excellent. Thank you. Those are fun. Thank you. Uh, Judy Schlesel. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do not do needlepoint, but I do embroidery with counted cross stitch. And I'm hoping that you're going to be able. Mm, not really. Uh, it's not, not really able to see it. But thank you for trying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Wishing you the best with that kind of cross stitch. That's really fun. Um, Pat, thank you, Judy. Thank you. Okay. My mother, I don't do needlepoint. I do cruel and embroidery, but my mother made this wall hanging and it was too big for my house. And so I turned it into a talus bag. Clever. For myself. And now it's a little repair, so it's downstairs to be repaired. And that is about to uh, 1985, she made it for my B'nai Mitzvah. When I got married, she made me this beautiful collar cover, which was 50 years ago. And now I made one for my daughter when she got married. And one of my friends lives in a retirement community and there was a le some project that someone left over in their community room. And she didn't know what to do with it. She said, oh, I'll send it to you. So she sends it to me, and it's a beautiful tablecloth, which I embroidered the flowers. It's very pretty. But it had no directions. It had no colors. It had no chart, just a <laughs> bunch of fabric. So I took it, and I have three grandchildren, so I had them hold their hands up, oh. and I embroidered their names and their hands. That's so adorable. So whenever I see them, I have their hands. I love remind. it. That's this was beautiful. very good during COVID to remind me that, I have grandchildren somewhere who love me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do, especially now. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Kayla? You there, Kayla? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I haven't done any needlepoint or cruel, or I've done it all for many, many years. But here's something I have on my wall that I did before my children were born, probably. 40 years ago so i'll show it to you oh one minute yes. that's that's wonderful There's noah's yeah. ark noah's ark goes in every yeah. child's room that's fantastic and so when my children were born i put it in their room and when they left me i kept it Thanks. and i have it in my guest room 
Oh, thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. Thank you. And then the last, uh, we have Joanne, and then one more called phone. <laughs> Joanne. Hi. Um, okay. I, I can't see anything. You're there. Okay. I started doing needlepoint when my mother started it way back, I don't know, over 50 years ago. And this piano bench cover is a what she was working on, and my sister and I would come along and do a few stitches here and there. Can you mm. see that? Yeah, it's gorgeous. And then I did this shalom. Nice. And the fiddler. Mm. Beautiful. And I've done a couple of hamsas. Here's one kind of hippie hamsa. Oh, very cool. I like that. And flowery. Wow, you've been busy. Oh, very, yeah. And somebody mentioned that they did one with the tribe of Reuben. And this is mine. Mm. I got about 50 years ago, mm. 40, 50 years ago. A friend mm. of a friend of mine, mm. yeah. the mother-in-law of a friend of mine, I bought it from her. And I didn't even work on it until during the pandemic. It's been sitting in my closet. Oh, good. So you had a built-in project. And that's great. Chronica one. Oh, that's great. Joanne, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to move on to the last one, but I want to say thank you. That was fantastic tour of all your beautiful, some of your needlework. And then uh, do we have one more called a uh, phone? Yes. Oh, Budapest. Okay. So I think that this was made by my grandmother. Um, maybe i'm not sure i'm trying to find out because it's very old and it's kind of like a bookmark hmm so wow. i'm and not i'm not even sure how it was made or you hmm. know but i know my grandmother used to do a lot of needlepoint and had it in frames hmm. like many of you have in picture frames and it's kind of a lost art so it's nice to be able to show the younger generations here that are watching this that you know it's something that's part of history. So thank you for sharing all of this. And, and if anybody wants to adopt grandchildren, let me know. <laughs> we, we'd like to adopt grandparents. So, you know, we, we lost most of the grandparents. So, uh, you know, thank you so much for sharing all of this. Thank you so and, much. Thank you. Um, Julie, I think that's about, oh, wait, do we have anyone else? Um, I have two more people. Two more? Okay, great. S Susan and Cynthia. Okay, uh, Susan, do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself? Okay, um, this is a design that my granddaughter uh, made for the Women of Reform Judaism. She painted it and she won the contest in, 19, in uh, 2015. Beautiful. And then I took it and needlepointed it. Wow, she has a future as a Judaic artist. That's fantastic. She, well, she's a graphic artist now. She's finished college and she's a graphic artist. Wonderful. And, uh, she just loves Judaism. And then I just did this, I just completed it. It's for a friend who's moving into a new house. Mm. And uh, it was just something that I picked up and uh, I'll be sending it to them. Beautiful. Thank you. That's gorgeous. Thank you, Susan. And Cynthia, I think you are our last one. Well, I, Z's are always the best. <laughs> <laughs> this is there. Oh, wow. Look at the stitching on that. Fantastic. Um, I was listening to your explanation and you said that you like three-dimensional things. So I thought I'd bring this up and her fur is all three-dimensional and her hair is all the rosettes. I love it. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I want to thank everybody who shared. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful fox. Is it a fox? No, it's just, um, it's just a modern, I don't know, it reminded me a little bit of Picasso. Yes. And so I decided to make it into a sampler. So every, every square, every little shape is a different uh, stitch. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Thank I have you. to say, everybody has been so inspirational, and I think we have to wind up the, the class. 
Um, I just want to thank everybody. It's just been so nice of you to participate. Um, there is a, a note that if anyone's interested in the black work uh, stitches from the Santa Fe Museum, um, Dilly at roadrunner.com, D-I-L-L-Y at roadrunner.com. She will help you find out more about that. So Julie, thank you.